Hello and welcome to the Dinosaur for week 10. Another seven curious, interesting, innovative type stories you might have missed last week, so let's crack on. First one is the Unitree H1. Now Unitree make other things, they make little kind of robot killer dog things, but this is the H1 bipedal robot. It has now set a new record for running for a bipedal robot. 3.3 meters per second. Now, if you're a runner, um, I'm a bit of a runner, but not a very good one. Uh, this will keep up with me very happily at about a kilometer in five minutes. So come the apocalypse, I probably can't outrun this thing. It can also, if I try to run over pallets and weights and bits of wood, it will follow me. And likewise, if I try and throw 30 kilograms of weight onto it, it will carry that as well. There's all sorts of things. I probably can't even kick it. Um, it does TikTok dances. It can do all sorts of really cool stuff as well. So um, most importantly, it's available to purchase. $90,000, uh, 90,000 pounds in fact, which is not bad actually for a bipedal robot. It's a pretty funky thing. Uh, if I had 90 grand, I'd probably buy one. So uh, if you do, go and buy one, let me know. Um, apologies for the really grubby uh, image and everything's grubby about that, but there you go. The EU has now demanded we need physical buttons in our cars. As of 2026, the new NCAP rating, which is the European sort of safety rating for cars, um, will only give you five stars if you have physical buttons for certain important things. That's things like indicators, horns, hazards, SOS buttons, that sort of thing. Because as we know, looking at screens in cars is bad and therefore to save costs, lots of manufacturers will start putting all of those functions in the screen to save them having to make physical buttons. EU has said no, so if you want that, you're a car manufacturer, you want that extra star for your end cap, you better have some physical buttons, looking at you Tesla. Um, and also there's quite a lot of other things coming in in 2026 as well. They are having in cabin monitoring, which will be mandated to any car sold in the EU. So if you are looking away from the road, it will detect that within three seconds and sound an alarm. So again, if you're looking at screen, for instance, it will be looking at you. Uh, if you crash thereafter, it's probably got a record of that and that will probably be what the police use. Um, Law Machine is interesting. Now this is a, let's actually read their description, AI collaborative story visualization system that transforms story text into multimedia. I.e. if you've got a short story or even a long story to be frank, you then type it in, it then looks at the story, figures out what the scenes are, who the characters are, it generates them and then will give you the storyboard of the story. You can then go into it and say actually I was thinking a bit more like photorealistic or want it in a sort of manga style or whatever um, and it will generate it for you. Um, you then output it and there is your story. Now I assume this will be uh, the, just an avalanche of terrible self-published books on the internet coming right at you soon. Uh, but likewise, if you are in the world of trying to get your, your short film visualized, then this is going to be a godsend to you. If you work in this industry, then this is going to be terrible. But there you go. Uh, Law Machine, you can sign up for it. I've signed up for it. I haven't actually got access to it just yet, um, but apparently lots of people have. Um, I'm still waiting for my email. There you go. Hugging Face, uh, if you don't know what Hugging Face is, is like the open source kind of repository of all stuff that's AI and cool to fiddle with. It's a good playground essentially. And they have now launched their own version of GPTs, which are OpenAI's GPT chatbots. They have now launched uh, assistants. So Hugging Face assistants are pre-created chatbots with extra goodness as well. So uh, you can use your own or you can specify which large language model it uses. You can type in prompts and essentially bundle that all into one thing and create a bot. So if you uh, want to play with your own custom bot, maybe it says things in, the, in different uh, ways or maybe it's trained on to speak like you or maybe it just gives you certain types of facts. You can train them on the hugging face for free. You can then launch your bot. Now at the moment, I think each bot is uh, already automatically launched in public mode so everybody can see it. Not quite sure how you make it private. You might have to pay, but there you go. Um, currently in beta, so they're just fiddling with stuff. But as you can see on the right-hand side, lots of people have made uh, bots already, or assistants, should I say. Um, so you can make yours too, for free. That's very interesting. Um, Sling TV is an American streaming TV service, and they uh, have maybe a little bit of a problem uh, retaining uh, subscribers. I actually had a quite a, uh, a drop in subscribers last year. So uh, the latest way to keep your subscribers is to do dual screening of games. So as you can see, some classic games, Centipede, Tetris, uh, Candy Crush, etc., etc., Wheel of Fortune. You can play them on the screen whilst you're watching your live streaming sports or programs or Netflix or whatever you want to do, I guess. So um, there you go. Uh, US only. Uh, I did have the VPN to get these screenshots and have a look at it, but that's kind of interesting. If you're in this world, you either usually have a UI where you can play games or you can watch the sports. Now they're letting you do them side by side. If it was me, I'd have maybe done vertical games, uh, but there you go. Um, 
4 knit 4D knitted dresses is interesting, or any garment. Now, I really like this because this uh, sort of has the potential to, to reduce waste. Um, I was reading some articles uh, just about um, global manufacturers of fast fashion and just how much of the world's carbon is basically being used in clothing. Um, this is really interesting in that this is from MIT Self-Assembly Lab and Ministry of Supply. Uh, and what it is, it's a, uh, let's just say, a computer knitted garment using a very special uh, type of yarn that is heat shrinkable. So uh, you create one garment and then you use the robot, which will then uh, scan you and then know where to uh, essentially form the garment to you. So I assume this can work for suits and dresses and t-shirts and all sorts of things. Um, maybe you want fitted woolen shorts. That'd be amazing. <laughs> so, so there you go. Um, but kind of neat. Um, obviously, it's high fashion as they're envisioning it here. But imagine this, you go into a shop, uh, one size fits all, and they shrink it to you and away you go. Or even you get body scanned, you send in the scan uh, to wherever you're buying your garment from and they do this uh, at source. There you go. And finally, in the latest version of How to Hoodwink an AI, uh, we've now got um, old school ASCII text. Now, if you said to an AI um, how to build a bomb, it will just go, look, all that is wrong. I've detected that and I've been told not to tell you about that. So I'm going to say, sorry, I can't talk about that. Now, if you said how to build A and then you entered essentially ASCII art, which is, you know, ASCII being letters, um, then you can, like, I've put the word dinosaur at the bottom in ASCII art as well. If you did that, it would go, oh, I, I can interpret that as a word because it's ASCII art. I know what that is. Oh, it's the word bomb. And it would go, how to build a bomb. Um, because you've done it in ASCII art and not just in straight text, it actually then sort of fudges the middle ground and goes, well, I'll execute that. And therefore it'll execute. Yep and it'll crack, crack on. So these sort of adversarial attacks or what they're calling uh, an art prompt jailbreak attack, um, we're starting to find more and more of these and they're just a bit curious. Nobody really knows how large language models work. And when you try and stop it, somebody will find a way around it. So uh, I quite like that one using essentially 1980s, 1970s ASCII art, uh, which is cool. Um, hopefully it was interesting. Hopefully it was useful. If it was, give it a like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you next week.